Hey everyone, it's Lexi. So in today's video, I'll be doing my fall slash winter birthday slash Christmas book haul. So these are books that I've accumulated over the past few months. Most of these I purchased for myself. Some of these were kind of birthday and Christmas gifts, for, but the majority of these I did buy for myself. And I kind of, for the new year, I'm putting myself on a book buying ban where I'm only allowed to purchase 14 books throughout the whole year because I went a little crazy with all of these sales that were going on. So uh, there's roughly like 40 books here. So I'll have to talk fast to kind of keep this video not too long um, but they're kind of all over in terms of genre like I said some of these were books um, I'm doing this video on the floor too because there were just too many and I didn't want to have to transfer them all into my bed because they're already stacked up here as you can see um, so yeah without further ado let's get started so this was a book that my boyfriend's grandmother gave me for Christmas and just to preface this I do really love the hippos like at the Cincinnati Zoo if you're familiar with Fiona like I just they have a new one named Fritz who's like a cute little baby I just think they're so cute so his grandma got me the uh, very Fiona Christmas book um, which I did read it was very very cute and it has the most adorable drawings in here but yeah I just love it I just thought it was very cute apparently there's more within like the Fionaverse of books too so I can slowly start accumulating these and then I can eventually read these to my kids one day next up this is a book that I got at my local bookstore and it's one that I've had my eye on um, but my boyfriend ended up purchasing it for me um, he purchased a few of these in here as well somewhere amongst the stacks but this was one of them that I had my eye on but it was when women wear dragons by Kelly Barnhill and so it says Alex Green is a young girl in a world much like ours except for its most seminal event the mass dragoning of 1955 when hundreds of thousands of ordinary wives and mothers sprouted wings scales and talons left uh, left a trail of fiery destruction in their paths and took to the sky was it their choice was it what will become of those loved ones why did alex beloved aunt marla transform but alex's mother did not no one knows it's taboo to speak about it forced into silence alex nevertheless must face the consequences of this astonishing event a mother more uh, protective than ever an absentee father their upsetting inconsistence insistence that her aunt never even existed and watching her beloved cousin Beatrice become dangerously obsessed with the forbidden I just thought this sounded really interesting and it was one that I like picked up several times and I was like on our like we always go there at least like once a week we go into town and we always peruse but this is one I kept coming back to and I was like you know what this sounds just really interesting um, and I did really love the cover so um, yeah this one sounds really fun next up this is a book that I got um, in the spring my boyfriend and I are planning on going to Ireland um, as like his post <laughs> when he graduated from his master's in 2020 obviously he couldn't go anywhere and I will be done with my at least my thesis I do plan to just to kind of extend everything and finish everything up in the summer but I will be a doctor at that point I just won't turn in my paperwork to graduate until the summer um, but for every place that we've gone to in Europe I always get like one of these Rick Stevens travel books so it's nice to have like a little collection of places that I've been to and then um, in the new year we're gonna go through and kind of see what places we want to go to um, and kind of plan out kind of our trip this way so I like just like I said I have one of these for every country we've been to so just keep the the collection going I guess so this was a book that was actually hard to find and I could only find it at chapters and go so I ordered it from um, their website and just had it shipped to my aunt's house so when we were visiting up in Canada I was able to uh, pick it up and it is looking for Jane by Heather Marshall and this one I just thought was really interesting but it essentially talks about the um, underground abortion kind of movement in Toronto specifically which I really liked so it says um, it's kind of a multi storyline um, so it says 2017 when Angela discovers a mysterious letter containing a life-shattering confession she is sent out to find her intended recipient her search takes her back to the 1970s when a group of daring women operated an illegal underground abortion network in Toronto known only by its widespread codename Jane and then so I think we follow a perspective of of the doctor who went by Jane and then um, there's like another storyline as well but I thought this one would be really interesting especially kind of looking at from a Canadian perspective um, as well in addition to all of the kind of 
rights that were stripped from women currently in the United States. So I thought this one sounded really interesting. It seems like it's just a Canadian specific book as well. So um, that's why it was a little bit hard to find here. But I saw this in like an Indigo's like newsletter thing that they sent out in the email. Um, it just sounded really interesting. So yeah, I'm really excited to pick this one up. And I don't know, it just sounds like it'll be very interesting and thought provoking. Next up, I got The Stories We Tell by Joanna Gaines. This is her memoir of kind of growing up, some of the things she experienced as a child, you know, meeting Chip and then eventually how she ended up getting like their TV show. Um, I do love like all their stuff. I like her cooking show. So I thought this one would just be very interesting to kind of read from her perspective and it was one of the ones that I was able to get on sale from one of the many sales over the holiday season so I picked this one up as well. Alrighty so these next two were my birthday gift from my boyfriend. Um, he says he says these are some of his favorite books that I thought that he thought I would like. So the first one is A Stranger in Olandria by Sophia Samatar. Um, so it says uh, Javik, a pepper merchant's son, has been raised on stories of Olandria, a distant land where books are as common as they are rare in his home. When his father dies and Javik travels to his place on the yearly selling trip to Olandria, his life is as close to perfect as he can imagine. But as he revels in the feast of birds, he becomes haunted by a ghost of an, an illiterate young girl from his own country. In desperation, Javik seeks the age of Olandria priests, becoming a pawn in the struggle between the Empire's two most powerful political factions. As civil war looms, Jevik must face his ghost and learn his learn her story, an, or, or, an ordeal that challenges his understanding of art and life, home and exile, and the limits of the seductive necromancy reading. So this one, like you said, is one of his favorite books that he thought I would really enjoy. So it sounds like a very thought-provoking fantasy and then I think this is like a collection of short stories I want to say um, and it is Fictionese by George Lewis Borges. I'm totally doing that right but um, so the 17 pieces of Fictionist demonstrates the gargantuan powers of imagination, intelligence, and style of one of the greatest writers of this or any century. Borges sends us on a journey into a compelling, bizarre, and profoundly resonant realm. We enter the field first field of Pascal's Abyss, the surreal and literal labyrinth of books, and the iconography of eternal return. So I think this is just a collection of short stories, and it's fairly short too, so it should be an easy one to kind of check off my uh, TBR list. Next is the book that I've had my eye on for a while and again it was like most of these I did get in kind of the Barnes and Nobles like sale um, and promotions that they had over like Black Friday and all those ones so um, this is one that I've had my eye on but I was waiting for it to come out in paperback and it finally is and it is Great Circle by Maggie Shipstead and yeah this one just sounds super interesting so it says after being rescued from a sinking ocean liner in 1914 Marina and Jamie Graves are raised by their dissolute um, uncle in Montana. Thereafter encountering a pair of brainstorming pilots passing through um, in beat up biplanes, Marina commences a lifelong love affair with flight. At 14, she drops out of school and finds an unexpected patron in a wealthy bootlegger, an arrangement that will haunt her for the rest of her life, even as it allows her to fulfill her destiny, circumnavigating the globe by flying over the North and South Poles. A century later, movie star Hadley Baxter is cast to play Marina in a film centered around her disappearance in Antarctica. Scandal plagued and trapped in her role as a, as a Hollywood wild child, Hadley is eager to redefine herself after getting fired from a romantic film franchise. Her immersion into the character of Marina unfolds along Marina's own story as the two women's destinies and their hunger for self-determination in vastly different places and time collide. I just thought this one would be interesting and it's also a Booker Prize finalist as well. So I've heard great things and this is like I said one I've been wanting to read for a while just waiting for a paperback and it's like a nice floppy one too so that is always a plus. So after reading Pure Nessie I was really determined to <laughs> read her other works by Susanna Clarke. So one of the ones she's most famous for is Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norwell uh, which is a massive tome. It is almost 900 pages so I think this is one that once I'm done with school um, I and and actually done with my dissertation I can like dedicate a lot of time to this. This is another one too that my boyfriend has recommended thousands of times and he read it recently when I was reading Piranesi he reread 
this and it's interesting too because there's a lot of like footnotes that are like incorporated into this text um so i'm really excited i've heard like really great things about this one and i really loved her writing style so i definitely think this is one that i'm gonna like dive right in and really enjoy this is just a book that i've seen everywhere it's been on like the number one bookseller list in like a lot of places i think it was the barnes noble like book of the year um, and it is Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie Garmus and again this is one that I've just heard a lot of things about and I got the fancy blue sprayed edges for edition so it says chemist Elizabeth is not your average woman in fact Elizabeth would be the first to point out that there is no such thing as an average woman but it's the early 1960s and her all-male team at Hastings Research Institute states a very unsci unscientific, un unscientific view of equality, except for one, Calvin Evans, the lonely, brilliant, Nobel Prize nominated grudge holder who falls in love with, of all things, her mind. True chemistry results. Like science, though, life is unpredictable, which is why a few years after Elizabeth finds herself not only a single mother, but also the reluctant star of America's most beloved cooking show, Supper at Six, Elizabeth's unusual approach to cooking proves revolutionary, but as her as her following grows, not everyone is happy because as it turns out, Elizabeth Zott isn't just teaching women to cook, she's daring them to change the status quo. Laugh out loud funny, shrewdly observant, and settled with a dazzling cast of supporting characters, lessons in chemistry, is an original and vibrant as it is uh, pro progenist. So yeah, like I said, heard great things, so maybe I will make this one of the book club picks because I feel like this book is just everywhere right now, um, so it should be easy. For you guys to find but yeah I'm excited to dive into this one alrighty next we're moving on to these stacks behind me um, this is one that again I've had my eye on for a while and it is one dark window by Rachel Gillig and I don't know it really the cover really drew me in and then the synopsis sounded really interesting so Elizabeth needs more than luck to stay safe in an eerie mislocked kingdom of blunder she needs a monster she calls him the nightmare an ancient miracle spirit trapped in her head he protects her he keeps her secrets but nothing comes for free especially magic when Elspeth meets a mysterious highwayman on the forest road her life takes a drastic turn thrust into a world of shadow and deception she joins a dangerous quest to cure blunder of the dark magic infecting it except the highwayman just so happens to be the king's own nephew captain of the most dangerous men in blunder and guilty of high treason so i just think this sounds really interesting it sounds like it's just an like kind of a dark and enchanting tale um but yeah this one just seems like it would be a lot of fun and i can't wait to dive in this is another one that i've seen around for a long time and it is hamnet by uh, maggie o'farrell and it says england 1580 the black death creeps across the land an ominous threat infecting the health the healthy the sick the old and young alike the end of days is near but life always goes on a young latin tutor penniless and bullied by a violent father falls in love with an extraordinary eccentric young woman agnes is a wild creature who walks her family's land with a falcon on her glove and is known throughout the countryside for her unusual gifts as a healer understanding plants and potions better than she does people One she settles with her husband on Henley Street in Stratford upon Avon. She becomes a fiercely protective mother and a steadfast centrifugal force in the life of her young husband, whose career on the London stage is just taking off when his beloved young son succumbs to sudden fever. So this one sounds very interesting. Again, this is one that I've seen around for years and just never picked up, so you can tell it was one of the buy one, get one 50% off uh, books, so that's why I ended up picking this one up. Again, this was another one of the buy one 50 get 150 and it just sounds really interesting too and it is a river enchanted by Rebecca Ross so this one says it starts with a letter and an ominous journey across dark waters ten years after being sent away to the mainland to become a bard Jack is summoned home to Cadence. Girls are going missing from the island in Adiria, his childhood nemesis and the future leader of the clan believes Jack is the only one who can find them. The elemental spirits that dwell in every breath of air, splash of water, blade of grass, and a flicker of fire 
fire find mirth in the lives of the human and a bard's magic is the only way to summon them and ask that the girls be returned. Yet as Jack and Adaria get closer to solving the mystery, it comes apparent that a older, darker secret about Cadence lurks beneath the surface and no harp song may be strong enough to stop it. This one sounded very intriguing to me. I like how it is kind of like a murder mystery, but with kind of a dark magic component to it. So um, yeah, I was like, this one just sounds interesting. I do really like the cover as well. So yeah, I can't wait to dive into this one. And I think this was the last of the buy one, get one 50% off that I bought. Um, and it is These Silent Woods by Kimmy Cunningham Grant. So it says, for eight years, Cooper and, her and his young daughter Finch have lived in isolation in a remote cabin in the Northern Appalachian woods. And that's exactly the way Cooper wants it because he's got a lot to hide. Finch has been raised on the books, filling the cabin shelves and the beautiful but brutal code of life in the wilderness. But she's starting to push back against the sheltered life Cooper has created for her and he's still haunted by the painful truth of what it took to get them there. The only people who know they exist are a mysterious local hermit and Cooper's old friend Jake, who visits every winter to bring them supplies, but this year Jake doesn't show up, revealing just how precarious their situation really is. And when a stranger wanders into their woods, Finch growing obsession with her could be put them all in danger. After a shocking disappearance threatens to upend the only life Finch has ever known, Cooper must decide whether to keep hiding or finally face the sins of his past. I think this sounds really interesting. I do really love kind of isolated cabin thriller mysteries and I feel like this is a perfect combination of those two kind of tropes that I do really enjoy. Um, so I think this one will be fun to read on like a cold winter's night and it is fairly short too. It's under 300 pages so I feel like this one will be another one to check off, check off on my TBR. So earlier this month I ended up reading Jade City by Fonda Lee and I really was blown away by that book. So it's one where it's, it's nice too because all the books in the trilogy are out. Um, so I ended up picking up the next two <laughs> And these are ones that are fairly big so they will take me a while to get through but they're just really interesting urban fantasies with a lot of political intrigue I'll talk more about it in my December wrap-up but yeah now that I have the next two I can marathon through them so this is one that took me by surprise because I had no idea it was coming out until I got an email from Goodreads saying like an author that you like has a new book coming out and it is Morrigan at the beginnings of the remnant universe by Mary E Pearson I love the remnant chronicles um, that's probably one of my favorite YA fantasy series. I loved it before it became popular in book talk and I didn't realize that the series was popular in book talk until I read like the author's note at the end. But this is just kind of like an illustrated version of her Morgan short story. I've read the short story several years ago and I think this is just an expansion of that short story beginning and kind of discussing the beginnings of the remnant world essentially. So there's a lot of like, you know, images in here cool little like trims around the pages so i was surprised that i saw that this was coming out but i thought this would be a fun it's a special illustrated collector's edition um which i thought would be fun to add to my collection of her books on my shelf this one just sounded really interesting and it is keeper of enchanted rooms by charlie and uh, Holmerk. And so it says, of Rhode Island, 1846. Estranged from his family, writer Merritt is surprised when he inherits a remote estate um, on the Narg Narganset Bay. Though <laughs> the property has been uninhabited for more than a century, Merritt is ready to call it home until he realizes he has no choice. With its slamming door shut, with its door slamming shut and locking him um, locking behind him, Windrill House is not about to let Merritt leave ever. Holda of the Boston Institute of the Keeper, Keeping of Enchanted Rooms has been trained in taming some structures in order to preserve their historical and magical significance. She understands the dangers of misspelled homes given to tantrum. She advises that it's in Merritt's best interest to make Windrow House their ally to do so she needs to move into. Um, so this kind of goes in, but I thought this was like a very interesting blend of magical realism into enchanted homes like I thought that was just a really cool concept again I really love this cover too it seems like it would be a, like a fun read oh and it even has like a 
floor plan of the house too so that seems like it will make it a lot of fun to read so yeah this one is one that I'm really excited to pick up and it seems something a little bit different than what I tend to read. Next up I have the newest book in the Still House Lake series and I thought this series was done because the author passed away a few years ago but apparently she still had some like notes planned out for this book in particular so they had another author come in to complete the series. I don't know if they're making more within the series or just kind of ending it here based on what the notes the author left for this. Um, so it's Trapper Road and the author obviously is Rachel Kane, who's the one who passed away and then the substitute writer is Carrie Ryan. So it says, Gwen has always been willing to do anything it takes to protect her kids, but there are some things she can't protect them from. When a violent incident at Connor's school brings the press to Gwen's doorship, she agrees to take a case out of town, hoping to keep her family out of crushing media spotlight. The case is that of a missing girl last seen getting into a truck with a stranger before disappearing. Gwen has a reputation for finding those who are lost, but this time something is wrong. Her instincts are off and every clue she uncovers only raises more doubts, not just about the missing girl and the circumstances of her disappearance, but also about the fragile safety Gwen's created for her family. The closer she comes to undercovering, uncovering the truth, the more she unwittingly puts them put these she loves at, those she loves at risks. So I thought this one would be, I don't, like I said, I don't know if they're continuing on or if this is like the final thing, but I think it'll be good to kind of have closure the way the author intended. So um, yeah, I've heard like the reviews of this are pretty good too. People are pretty pleased with this new author's like interpretation of the author's notes, the original author's notes. So yeah. It will be good to kind of have some closure to the series. Next up, I got the screenplay for The Secrets of Dumbledore. I have the first two for the first ones as well. And I do find it's easier to kind of read this because sometimes, like, with the way they talk, I can't, like, miss some of the things they say. And so, oh, this one has, like, even illustrations in here, too, of, like, things. But, yeah, definitely I think I will read this and then rewatch the movie because I feel like I will pick up on more things. That's what happened even with the first two movies as well. So yeah, I can add this to my little collection over there. So I read Among Others by Joe Walton, which was a gift by my boyfriend for my birthday last year. And so I really liked her writing and I know she's very famous for this one book in particular, which is Wet Lent. Um, and it says, young, I have these names are so hard to pronounce. Young Girolamo's life is a series of miracles. It is a miracle he, ha it's a miracle that he can see demons plain as day and that he can cast them out with a force of his will. It's a miracle that his friends with Pico della Miranda, the court of Corandia. Oh my god. That's a miracle that's, it's a miracle that when Girolamo <laughs> visits the deathbed of Lorenzo. The dying Med Medici is wreathed in a celestial light, a surprise to everyone, Lorenzo included. It's a miracle that when Charles VIII of France invades northern Italy, Guillermo meets him with meets him in a field and convinces him not to only spare Florence but also protect it. It's a miracle whenever Guillermo preaches, crowds swoon. Um, it, this is just beginning because Guillermo is not who or what he thinks he is. He will discover the truth about himself in the most starting possible time and that will only begin only be the beginning of his many lives. Again, this is like a classic of one of her most famous books and I just thought, you know, I really liked Among Others and I've heard great things about Lent as well and I really liked her writing. So yeah, decided to pick this one up as well. So continuing on with the theme of books that I like to purchase, like travel books for places I wanted to go, I didn't get one for when we went to Scotland. So I have this to add to my collection as well. I can put this on my bookshelf upstairs. It's definitely like the UK is definitely an area I want to visit again. I really love Scotland and I definitely want to explore more of it in the future. So this will give me good ideas because now that I've done Edinburgh, um, I can like kind of venture out from there. Next, this is the second book in Barbara Nicholas's new series. And so this one is Dark of Night. Um, I just actually just read the first book um, not too long ago. So sorry, there is <laughs> Tucker's barking. 
but it says, What an exotic way to die in Chicago. When esteemed historian Elizabeth is found in her car killed by a cobra bite, only a brilliant professor, a semiotician, Dr. Evan Wilding, can see the signs around her strange death. As he helps homicide detective Addie Bissett decipher the scene, the puzzle left behind uh, <laughs> offer Evan chilling passage into the mind of the killer. Um, I think this one will be interesting. I feel like the first book, I felt some disconnect with the characters, and I feel like I hope with the second one that I get to kind of experience more of these characters and get to know them better. Um, but yeah, this one just sounds interesting. I do love a good murder mystery, so I did enjoy it, the first book, so hopefully this one just gets better now that we've kind of established the characters and I just want to get to know them more. So this is a series that I've seen a lot of people rave about and I think there's like a ton of series within this world in particular and it is The Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb in particular so it says the kingdom of the six duchess is on the brink of civil war when news breaks that the crowd prince has fathered a bastard son is a, and is shamed into abdication. The child's name is Fitz and he is despised. Raised in the cattle stables only the companion only the company of the king's fool, the ragged children of the lower city, and his unusual affinity with animals provides Fitz with any comfort. To be useful to the crown, Fitz is trained as an assassin and to use the traditional magic of the Farseer family. But his tutor, allied to another political faction, is determined to discredit, even kill him. Fitz must survive, for he may be destined to save the kingdom. Again, I've heard so many great things about this and like the other series that's somehow connected to this, so I wanted to get the first one just to see if I would like it, and then definitely I can like make, make my way through this series, but I feel like this is one that is raved about all the time by so many booktubers, so I was like, I need to see what all the hype is about. Okay, we're making our way towards, I feel like I have maybe 10 more books left. Uh, next up I have Devil's Way by Robert Brinza. This is the next book in the Kate Marshall series. So it says, when Prime and guest star Kate Marshall is rushed to hospital after being pulled into a riptide current in the sea, the near-death experience leaves her shaken. During her recovery, she befriends Jean, an elderly lady in the same ward who tells the horring story of how her grandson Charlie went missing 11 years earlier during a camping trip to Dartmoor. Um, she obviously will <laughs> agree to take on the case. I'm trying to keep this short and sweet now. I do really love this series and can't wait to see what Kate has in store next. So here's another continuation of a crime series and it is A Movie Land by Lee Goldberg. This is the next book in the Eve Ronan series. So it says, for decades Malibu Creek State Park was a spectacular natural setting where Hollywood fantasies were made. But when a female camper is gunned down, it becomes a real life killing ground. Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department homicide detective Eve Ronan and Duncan are assigned the case, which Duncan fears is the latest in a series of sniper attacks that began long before Eve came to his lost hills. This sounds really interesting. Like sniper stuff I think is really creepy. Like that really definitely scares me and I do really love the character of Eve. I think she's a very interesting character and I do think the setting of like LA and Hollywood makes for something a little bit different in terms of the like crime series that are around currently so yeah I can't wait to dive into this one. Next I have Michelle Obama's new book which is The Light We Carry which talks about how she's found ways to kind of overcome during difficult Kind. So this is essentially kind of inspired by basically the pandemic, January 6th, like all these things. And so she kind of talks about ways she's learned to really um, kind of deal with the stress and kind of overcome these challenging times. So this is one that I've read, I really enjoyed. She's just very inspiring. Next I have the newest book in the Erica Foster series by Robert Brinzida, which is Fatal Witness. He hasn't had a new book in this series come out for a while, so um, it will be fun to kind of dive back into this character. So it says, Detective Erica Foster is on a late night walk near her new house in Blackheath when she stumbles upon the brutal murder of Vicky, a true crime podcaster. Erica is assigned to the case and discovers that Vicky has been working on a new podcast episode about a serial predator who preys on young, women stu young female students around South London, stalking out his victims in the halls of residences before breaking in at the dead of night. When Erica discovers that Vicky's notes and sound recordings were stolen from her flat at the time of her murder, it leads her to believe that Vicky was close to unmasking the attacker and she was killed 
to guarantee her silence. Um, yeah, like I said, it's been a few years since there has been a new book in this series, so I think it'll be fun. I think I marathoned these back in like 2019, so it's been a few years. I think he's been focusing on the Kate Marshall series, um, but I do really love Erica as well, so um, it'll be fun to kind of dive back into this world. Next I have Codename Helene by Ariel Lawhorn. This is again the book that's been on my radar for a while and I do want to get more into kind of historical fiction, World War II historical fiction because I used to read it a lot but now I don't. So it says in 1936 Nancy is an intrepid Australian expat living in Paris. She has left her way into the reporting job for a Hearst newspaper when she meets wealthy French industrialist Henry. No sooner does Henry sweep Nancy off her feet and convince her to become Miss Fouquetia that the Germans invade France and she takes yet another name, a code name. Told in intertwining timelines organized around the four code names Nancy used during the war, code name Helene follows Nancy's transformation from journalist to one of the most powerful leaders in the French resistance, known for her ferocious wit, her signature red lipstick, and her ability to summon weapons straight from the Allied forces. But with power comes notoriety, and no matter how careful Nancy is to protect her identity, the risk of exposure is great for herself and for those she loves. Again, like I said, I haven't read historical fiction in World War II in a while, so I'm hoping this one will kind of, you know, reel me back into this genre. Next up I have Have I Told You This Already by Lauren Graham. This is her newest, I think it's a collection of short stories, um, kind of all over the place, I think. Like, I don't, um, really know too much. I've, like, read her other books. Um, I think they're right here somewhere. Yeah, I've read Someday, Someday, Maybe, um, talking as fast as I can, and then her speech that she gave as well. Um, and yeah, so it has just like a collection of short stories and like her kind of like memoir type things. Um, and yeah, I thought this would be like a fun little essay collection to read, and like I said, big fan. Next up, I have Curse by Marissa Meyer. This is the sequel to Gilded, which is what I'm currently reading right now. I don't want to read the synopsis of this one, obviously, because I haven't finished the first one yet, but I have been really enjoying it. It's a retelling of the fairy tale from Stillskin, and I just really love Marissa Meyer as an author, so yeah, it'll be fun to kind of finish out this duology soon. Next up, I have The Choice by Nora Roberts. This is the third and final book in the Dragonheart legacy. Um, I still need to read book two. I was planning on reading it in November and I just didn't have time so definitely in the new year I can marathon this trilogy and get it all done. I've really enjoyed this one. It's about a girl who finds out that her father was a very powerful fae um, and it kind of goes off from there. Again I don't want to read this one because I haven't read it yet but yeah definitely will dive and finish this series very very soon. This is one that I've heard really great things about and it is a YA fantasy which I don't really tend to read but I was like you know what I feel like a lot of people have raved about this one so it might actually take me by surprise and it is Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Margaret Rogerson. So it says all sorcerers are evil. Elizabeth has known that as long as she has known anything. Raised as a foundling in one of Ostromir's great libraries, Elizabeth has grown up among magical grimmeries that rattle beneath iron chains capable of transforming into grotesque monsters. When an act of sabotage releases the library's most dangerous grimmery, Elizabeth is accused of treason. When no one, with no one to turn to but her sworn enemy, the sorcerer Nathaniel, and his mysterious servant, she finds herself entangled in a centuries-old conspiracy. Not only could the great libraries go up in flames, but the world among them. Again, this is like a YA fantasy, like I said. I don't read this genre, but maybe this one will take me by surprise because I've heard so many people say great things about this one. This was one, definitely the cover intrigued me, and I believe it is a duology. The, the second book came out pretty recently, um, and it is Daughter of the Moon goddess by Sue Lin Tan and like that cover is so beautiful uh, but it says growing up on the moon uh, Chin Yang is accustomed to solitude unaware that she is being hidden by the feared celestial emperor who exiled her mother for stealing his elixir of immortality but when Chin Yang's magic flares and her existence is discovered she is forced to flee her home leaving her mother behind alone powerless and afraid she makes her way to the celestial kingdom a land of wonder and secrets disguised her identity, she seizes the opportunity to learn alongside the Emperor's son, mastering archery and magic even as passion flames between her and the prince. 
To save her mother, Yin Jin uh, embarks on a perilous quest, comforting legendary creatures and vicious enemies against the earth and skies. However, when treachery looms and forbidden magic threatens the kingdom, she must challenge the ruthless celestial emperor for her dream, striking a dangerous bargain in which she is torn between losing all she loves and plunging the realm into chaos. This one just sounds super interesting. Um, I've I have heard great things about this one too and it seems like something a little bit different um, as well but yeah it just seems like a really kind of nice fantastical um, enchanting read. Alrighty my friends we are down to the last three books. This one is an arc that was sent to me um, so very thank you to the publishers for sending this at uh, Megan Beatty Communications. Um, this one just sounded really interesting. Um, and it also came with this fun little ring and bookmark, um, but it's, it is The Hidden Life of Astra Kelly by Catherine A. Sherbrooke. And so it says here, after winning a prestigious fashion design contest in 1949, Astra Kelly flees the world of modeling in New York and arrives in Beverly Hills to claim her prize, a design apprenticeship for, with Fernando Tavilio. But Fernando... But Fernando has no job available. He busily prepares for the opportunity of his lifetime, proving to Galaxy Studios that he is the perfect courtier for the A-list stars. The moment he meets Astor, though, he knows she's the missing ingredient he needs in Astor to be a stand-in model for Lauren Bacall. Astor is dismayed to once again have her creative potential sidelined, but when Fernando promises to mentor her if he wins the business, she agrees. Aster and Fernando quickly become entangled with Hollywood insiders, Aster with the head of Galaxy Studios, Fernando with the biggest up-and-coming stars, Christopher Page, and their friendship becomes essential as they navigate a glamorous and complicated existence where what's real must often be hidden and nothing is quite what it seems. As Aster's ambition grows and she faces a crisis, Fernando's future becomes threatened by the Hollywood machine. Aster makes a decision that changes the directory of their lives forever. This one sounded really interesting in terms of the kind of characters and just the I love that kind of era of Hollywood too so it kind of gives me the um, Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo vibes in terms of this kind of like Hollywood era so it sounds like it will be a lot of fun. And alrighty, for the last two books, we have The Morge Portrait by Maggie O'Farrell. This is one that I've heard great things about in terms of having a really good, unreliable narrator. So it says, Florence, the 1950, Luceriza, third daughter of the Grand Duke, is comfortable with her obscure place in the plazo, free to wander as it, at its treasures, observe its clandestine clandestine workings and devote herself to artistic pursuits. But when her older sister dies on the eve of her wedding to the ruler of Ferra, Medina and Riggio, Lorenzia um, is thrust unwillingly into the limelight. The duke is quick to request her hand in marriage and her father just as quick to accept on her behalf. Having barely left, gu having barely left girlhood behind, uh, Luceriza must make her way to the troubled court whose customs are opaque and where her arrival is not universally welcome. Perhaps most mystifying of all is her new husband himself, Alfonso. If, um, if is he the playful sophisticate he appears to be before their wedding, the aesthetic the asset happiness in the company of artists and musicians, or the ruthless politician before whom even his formidable sister seemed to tremble. As Larissa sits in the constructing finery of her painting intended to preserve her image for centuries to come, one thing becomes worryingly clear. In the court's eyes, she has one duty, provide the heir that will shore up this that will shore up the future of the Ferenczi dynasty. Until then, for all her rank and nobility, the new judge's future hangs entirely on the balance. This one just seems really interesting. Again, with the unreliable narrator, I think when done well, that can be a very fun read. And I think this one, like I said, I've heard great things. I think it definitely falls into that category. And finally, the last book in this massive haul is The Night Ship by Jess Kidd. This is one that I've had my eye on and it just sounds really enchanting. Um, so I picked it up. So it says, 1629, a newly orphaned girl named Macon is bound for the Dutch East Indies on Ithi Badava, one of the greatest ships of the Dutch Golden Age. Curious and mischievous, Macon spends a long journey going on misadventures above and below deck, searching for a mystical monster. But the true monster might be closer than she thinks. 
1989, a lonely boy named Gil, who after the death of his mother is sent to live with his grandfather, a fisherman off the coast of Western Australia among the members of the seasonal fishing community where his late mother once lived. There on the tiny reef shrouded island, he discovers a story of an infamous shipwreck. So I think this combines the present day or like the present day and the past storyline especially with like such a big time gap of like 300 plus years I think it'll be interesting to see how these two stories are weaved together but again I've heard great things and I definitely can't wait to pick this one up so that's it guys if you guys stayed along with me for this huge book haul then good for you but I thank you guys so much for walking watching like I said this is a lot of books, um, so I'm definitely going to be on a book buying ban um, in the new year. I definitely want to kind of, one of my goals is to kind of really tackle my TBR and get it down to a reasonable amount because I feel like now it's just crazy. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know which books you think I need to read and pick up first. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and I'll see you guys next time. Bye guys.